In 2024, the U.S. economy heavily relies on massive ships that move about 16,000 containers per minute across the seas. If something were to happen to these ships, it would be catastrophic for our economy. Recently, new rules and unexpected problems have led these ships to avoid American ports, causing chaos for shipping companies and ports. Join us as we look into the essential security measures protecting these ships and keeping our nation's economy running smoothly. The United States is spearheading an initiative, joining forces with 10 other nations to create an international group. The main aim of this group is to protect the large ships that transport various goods across the vast Red Sea. Have you ever paused to consider the current state of the maritime industry, especially the vessels that deliver goods to the United States? There appears to be a noticeable reduction in the number of these gigantic ships, known as container ships, docking at American ports. This decline is particularly evident among the largest types of these ships, known as ultra-large container ships. Remarkably, these enormous vessels have the capacity to carry upwards of 16,000 containers, with each container being as long as a 20-foot room. You might be asking, why is this happening? Not too long ago, a special group in the U.S. government, the House Subcommittee on Transportation and Infrastructure, held a meeting. They wanted to figure out what's happening in the Red Sea, especially after an attack by a group called the Houthis. During this meeting, they talked a lot about safety and the politics around it. But they also kept coming back to one point, infrastructure. Infrastructure means the basic systems and services, like roads and bridges, that a country needs. The fact that they talked about it so much makes us wonder why it's so important for the ships moving through the Red Sea. So, where are all these container ships that travel around the world? A website called Marine Traffic keeps track of all these ships. It shows us where all these big container ships are going across the oceans. Most of these ships start their journey in Asia and take a path across the North Pacific Ocean. They follow a path called the Great Circle Route, which goes up towards the north. If you look at the world as a sphere instead of a flat map, you can see the paths they take more clearly. This way of looking at things helps us understand how ships decide which way to go. The map also shows how ships change their paths to stay away from bad weather. We can see lots of ships coming out of the Straits of Malacca, heading towards South Africa, or moving along the east coast towards the Indian Ocean. In the middle of the extensive web of marine routes, the marine traffic system is particularly interested in tracking the giant container ships, those with a space for more than 16,000 standard 20-foot containers. They are starting a detailed project to track and study these huge ships more closely. This effort is not just about counting ships, it's about understanding the changes and patterns in how these big boats move around the world. Right now, there's a lot of attention on the biggest ships out there, known as ultra-large container vessels. These massive ships usually start their journeys in East Asia and make their way through busy places like the port of Singapore. From there, they pass through the narrow Malacca Straits on their way to Sri Lanka's Colombo Terminal. These ships used to follow a pretty standard path. They'd sail through the Gulf of Aden, slip through the Bab el Mandab Strait, and move up through the Red Sea to reach the Mediterranean Sea. But things have changed. The conflict with the Houthi group has made this usual route risky. As a result, many of these huge ships are now taking a different path. Instead of their usual route, they are gathering in areas like the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. Some are even trying to go around a blockade near the city of Jeddah. Now, many of these ships are taking a longer trip around the southern tip of Africa to reach their European destinations, such as Algeciras in Spain or Tangier in Morocco. There are also other new routes popping up, guiding these giant ships into different parts of the Mediterranean Sea, with stops in places like Genoa in Italy or Piraeus in Greece, United States anymore. This change is something that needs more looking into. The recent data from last month, January, helps us understand how the routes for shipping from Asia to Europe have changed. This data checks out the movements of the big shipping groups, like the 2M Alliance, which includes big names like Maersk and Master of Science, and the Ocean Alliance, with Costco, Evergreen, and CMACGM. When we look at the types of ships these alliances are using, we see some clear patterns. For example, the 2M Alliance is using some of the biggest ships out there, with room for between 19,000 and 24,000 standard containers on their Swan Line. On the other hand, the Ocean Alliance has slightly smaller ships, but they are still quite large, with room for about 12,700 standard containers. 
these differences in ship sizes and the routes they're taking are crucial for understanding the current state of global shipping and how it's changing. Next, we look at how big ships have changed over time, growing from small to huge, and how this changes the way we move things around the world. The changes in the world of container shipping are big and important. Over time, the ships that carry containers across the sea have become much bigger. This growth shows how ship travel on the ocean has changed and grown. John Paul Rodriguez is an expert on how things get moved around the world, and he talks a lot about how container shipping has changed over the years. His research looks back at how containers changed the way goods are moved around the world. He talks about how, since the 1950s, these ships have changed a lot, especially with big changes in the 1970s that made them even more important. Initially, the ships that carried these containers were called Panamax ships because they were just the right size to fit through the locks of the Panama Canal, built back in 1944. But then, things started to change in the late 1980s. That's when new, bigger ships called Post Panamax started appearing. These ships were too big to fit through the Panama Canal as it was back then. This change was a big deal because it meant that people had to think differently about how ships move and how ports work. Because these ships were getting so big, ports around the world had to change a lot. They needed bigger cranes to lift the containers off the ships, more room to store all the containers, and deeper water so the bigger ships could come in without getting stuck. These changes weren't just about making things bigger, they were about making everything work better together, from the ships themselves to the ports where they dock. The bigger ships also mean that the people running the ports have to plan more carefully. They have to make sure there's enough space for all the containers and that the big cranes can reach high enough to unload them. Plus, because these new ships sit lower in the water than the old ones, the routes they travel might need to change, too. All of these changes show how the world of moving things from place to place on the ocean keeps evolving. It's not just about the ships getting bigger, it's about the whole system changing to keep up with global trade needs. Because of this, the growth and changes in container ships are about more than just new technology. They are also driving big changes and improvements in ports all around the world. Since the early 2000s, we've seen a huge change in the shipping world with the start of the very large container ships, or VLCSs for short. These big ships can carry between 11,000 and 15,000 standard containers, which was a big step up from what was possible before. The shipping company Maersk was at the forefront of this change. They started using two new types of ships, called the E-Class and then the even bigger Triple E-Class. These new ships were a whole different kind of thing from what had been used before. They weren't just a bit bigger, they were a whole new idea in how ships could be made and used. The E-Class and Triple E-Class ships were huge, they were as long as four football fields and taller than a skyscraper. They could carry way more containers than earlier ships, stacked 22 containers wide and 10 high above the deck. Because these ships could carry so many more containers, they made it possible to move goods around the world more quickly and cheaply. This was great for global trade. But the huge size of these ships also made things complicated. They were too big for a lot of ports, so only certain places in the world could let them dock. To deal with these giant ships, ports had to get new, taller cranes and make more room for storing containers. They also had to improve other parts of the port to deal with all the extra stuff these ships were bringing. At the same time, something big was happening in Panama. In the mid-2000s, they started a huge project to make the Panama Canal bigger. This project, called the Panama Canal Expansion Project, was all about making the canal ready for bigger ships. They built new locks that were bigger and better than the old ones. This was a huge deal because it meant that bigger ships could move between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans much easier than before. And it wasn't just the Panama Canal that was getting an upgrade. The Suez Canal, another super important waterway, was also getting bigger and better to handle these huge ships. By 2015, both canals had been updated and were ready for the new, bigger ships. This change meant that ships could take new routes around the world, making global shipping faster and more efficient. The bigger canals, like the new ships, changed the way goods move around the planet, helping to make the world's economy more connected than ever. We see how new, even bigger ships are changing travel through famous waterways, making a big splash in how we transport goods. After they made the Panama Canal bigger, the world of shipping saw the arrival of a whole new type of ship in 2014. 
These are called Neopanamax ships. They are about 366 meters long and were made just right to go through the bigger Panama Canal. This change was a big deal for how things are moved worldwide by sea. Now, the canal can handle much bigger ships than before, ones that can carry over 12,500 standard shipping containers and some can even carry up to 15,000. But that's not where the story ends. Around the middle of the 2010s, something even bigger happened. Mesk, a big name in shipping, came out with a new kind of ship called the Triple E class. These giants can carry 18,000 containers. And when people got used to those, the shipping world got an even bigger surprise. New ships called Mega Box 24 started showing up, and they are huge, they can carry between 20,000 and 24,000 containers. Imagine that, ships that are 400 meters long and 61 meters wide, and they sit 16 meters deep in the water. These super big ships are a whole new step in how we build and use ships. But they are so big that they can't just go anywhere. Ports around the world have had to do a lot of work to be ready for them. They've had to dig out the bottoms of harbors so. These big ships don't get stuck, lift up bridges so the ships can fit underneath, and get special cranes that are big enough to reach the top of the containers on these giant ships. The changes don't stop there. With ships this big, everything about moving goods across the sea changes. Ports need more space to store all those containers, and the routes the ships take might need to change, too, because not all waterways can handle ships that big. This means that cities with ports have had to think about how traffic works, how to protect the environment, and how to keep everything running smoothly when these giant ships come in. The arrival of these megaships has also made people think more about safety. With so many containers on one ship, there's a lot to keep track of. The companies that own these ships and the ports they visit have to work together to make sure everything is done right and safely. This includes making sure the containers are loaded correctly and keeping an eye on the weather, since big ships can be affected by strong winds and waves differently than smaller ones. All these changes, the bigger canal, the giant ships, the new port equipment are all about making global trade faster and cheaper but they also mean a lot of planning and work to make sure everything goes smoothly. Even though these huge container ships and the even bigger Mega 24s can carry loads of containers, they are not coming to the United States as much as you might expect. A big reason for this is that many ports in the US just aren't ready for them. They are either not deep enough or they don't have the right kind of equipment to unload all those containers. This issue really came to light in December when a group called the Houthis started causing trouble. The Houthis started out in the 1990s as a group in northern Yemen. They were unhappy with the Yemeni government because they felt their Saudi Shia community wasn't getting a fair deal. At first, they just wanted more say in their local area. But over time, more and more people who were also unhappy for different reasons joined them. By 2014, they had gotten so strong that they took over Yemen's capital, Sana'a, and kicked out the government. This caused a really big and messy fight. Countries nearby, like Saudi Arabia, were worried about what this meant for them, especially because they thought Iran was involved. So, they started fighting against the Houthis to try to put the old government back in power. This fight made life very hard for regular people in Yemen and messed up a lot of things, including how ships move around the world. Because the Houthis took over parts of Yemen that are near important sea paths, ships that usually went through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal started taking different routes to stay safe. This change shook up the usual ways that ships move and made it hard for the people who plan these trips. Back in the US, the problem with the ports is a big deal. Big ports like New York, Savannah and Houston need to dig their waterways deeper and update their equipment to handle these giant ships. Some places have started making changes so they can fit the slightly smaller Neopanamax ships, but there's still a lot more work to do. The big shipping companies, like Maersk and others from all over the world, really care about this. They want to make sure that the US ports can handle big ships because it's good for their business. They are all for spending more money to make the ports better. This would mean the ports could take in bigger ships and more goods, which is something these big companies and a lot of other businesses would benefit from. So, this whole situation shows how everything is connected. Problems far away, like the fight in Yemen, can affect how goods move around the world. And big ships needing special ports can change how countries like the US spend their money on things like digging deeper harbors and buying bigger cranes.
then we turn our eyes to America's ports and see why they need to catch up to handle these giant ships and keep up with global trade. The changes in the world of container shipping are big and important. Over time, the ships that carry containers across the sea have become much bigger. This growth shows how ship travel on the ocean has changed and grown. John Paul Rodriguez is an expert on how things get moved around the world, and he talks a lot about how container shipping has changed over the years. His research looks back at how containers changed the way goods are moved around the world. He talks about how, since the 1950s, these ships have changed a lot, especially with big changes in the 1970s that made them even more important. Initially, the ships that carried these containers were called Panamax ships because they were just the right size to fit through the locks of the Panama Canal, built back in 1944. But then, things started to change in the late 1980s. That's when new, bigger ships called Post Panamax started appearing. These ships were too big to fit through the Panama Canal as it was back then. This change was a big deal because it meant that people had to think differently about how ships move and how ports work. Because these ships were getting so big, ports around the world had to change a lot. They needed bigger cranes to lift the containers off the ships, more room to store all the containers, and deeper water so the bigger ships could come in without getting stuck. These changes weren't just about making things bigger, they were about making everything work better together, from the ships themselves to the ports where they dock. The bigger ships also mean that the people running the ports have to plan more carefully. They have to make sure there's enough space for all the containers and that the big cranes can reach high enough to unload them. Plus, because these new ships sit lower in the water than the old ones, the routes they travel might need to change, too. All of these changes show how the world of moving things from place to place on the ocean keeps evolving. It's not just about the ships getting bigger, it's about the whole system changing to keep up with global trade needs. Because of this, the growth and changes in container ships are about more than just new technology. They are also driving big changes and improvements in ports all around the world. Since the early 2000s, we've seen a huge change in the shipping world with the start of the very large container ships, or VLCSs for short. These big ships can carry between 11,000 and 15,000 standard containers, which was a big step up from what was possible before. The shipping company Maersk was at the forefront of this change. They started using two new types of ships, called the E-Class and then the even bigger Triple E-Class. These new ships were a whole different kind of thing from what had been used before. They weren't just a bit bigger, they were a whole new idea in how ships could be made and used. The E-Class and Triple E-Class ships were huge, they were as long as four football fields and taller than a skyscraper. They could carry way more containers than earlier ships, stacked 22 containers wide and 10 high above the deck. Because these ships could carry so many more containers, they made it possible to move goods around the world more quickly and cheaply. This was great for global trade. But the huge size of these ships also made things complicated. They were too big for a lot of ports, so only certain places in the world could let them dock. To deal with these giant ships, ports had to get new, taller cranes and make more room for storing containers. They also had to improve other parts of the port to deal with all the extra stuff these ships were bringing. At the same time, something big was happening in Panama. In the mid-2000s, they started a huge project to make the Panama Canal bigger. This project, called the Panama Canal Expansion Project, was all about making the canal ready for bigger ships. They built new locks that were bigger and better than the old ones. This was a huge deal because it meant that bigger ships could move between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans much easier than before. And it wasn't just the Panama Canal that was getting an upgrade. The Suez Canal, another super important waterway, was also getting bigger and better to handle these huge ships. By 2015, both canals had been updated and were ready for the new, bigger ships. This change meant that ships could take new routes around the world, making global shipping faster and more efficient. The bigger canals, like the new ships, changed the way goods move around the planet, helping to make the world's economy more connected than ever. We see how new, even bigger ships are changing travel through famous waterways, making a big splash in how we transport goods. After they made the Panama Canal bigger, the world of shipping saw the arrival of a whole new type of ship in 2014. These are called Neo-Panamax ships. They are about 366 meters long and were made just right to go through the bigger Panama Canal. 
this change was a big deal for how things are moved worldwide by sea. Now, the canal can handle much bigger ships than before, ones that can carry over 12,500 standard shipping containers and some can even carry up to 15,000. But that's not where the story ends. Around the middle of the 2010s, something even bigger happened. Maersk, a big name in shipping, came out with a new kind of ship called the Triple E class. These giants can carry 18,000 containers. And when people got used to those, the shipping world got an even bigger surprise. New ships called Mega Box 24 started showing up, and they are huge, they can carry between 20,000 and 24,000 containers. Imagine that, ships that are 400 meters long and 61 meters wide, and they sit 16 meters deep in the water. These super big ships are a whole new step in how we build and use ships. But they are so big that they can't just go anywhere. Ports around the world have had to do a lot of work to be ready for them. They've had to dig out the bottoms of harbors so. These big ships don't get stuck, lift up bridges so the ships can fit underneath and get special cranes that are big enough to reach the top of the containers on these giant ships. The changes don't stop there. With ships this big, everything about moving goods across the sea changes. Ports need more space to store all those containers, and the routes the ships take might need to change, too, because not all waterways can handle ships that big. This means that cities with ports have had to think about how traffic works, how to protect the environment and how to keep everything running smoothly when these giant ships come in. The arrival of these megaships has also made people think more about safety. With so many containers on one ship, there's a lot to keep track of. The companies that own these ships and the ports they visit have to work together to make sure everything is done right and safely. This includes making sure the containers are loaded correctly and keeping an eye on the weather, since big ships can be affected by strong winds and waves differently than smaller ones. All these changes, the bigger canal, the giant ships, the new port equipment are all about making global trade faster and cheaper. But they also mean a lot of planning and work to make sure everything goes smoothly. Even though these huge container ships and the even bigger Mega 24s can carry loads of containers, they are not coming to the United States as much as you might expect. A big reason for this is that many ports in the US just aren't ready for them. They are either not deep enough or they don't have the right kind of equipment to unload all those containers. This issue really came to light in December when a group called the Houthis started causing trouble. The Houthis started out in the 1990s as a group in northern Yemen. They were unhappy with the Yemeni government because they felt their Saudi Shia community wasn't getting a fair deal. At first, they just wanted more say in their local area. But over time, more and more people who were also unhappy for different reasons joined them. By 2014, they had gotten so strong that they took over Yemen's capital, Sana'a, and kicked out the government. This caused a really big and messy fight. Countries nearby, like Saudi Arabia, were worried about what this meant for them, especially because they thought Iran was involved. So, they started fighting against the Houthis to try to put the old government back in power. This fight made life very hard for regular people in Yemen and messed up a lot of things, including how ships move around the world. Because the Houthis took over parts of Yemen that are near important sea paths, ships that usually went through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal started taking different routes to stay safe. This change shook up the usual ways that ships move and made it hard for the people who plan these trips. Back in the US, the problem with the ports is a big deal. Big ports like New York, Savannah and Houston need to dig their waterways deeper and update their equipment to handle these giant ships. Some places have started making changes so they can fit the slightly smaller Neopanamax ships, but there's still a lot more work to do. The big shipping companies, like Maersk and others from all over the world, really care about this. They want to make sure that the US ports can handle big ships because it's good for their business. They are all for spending more money to make the ports better. This would mean the ports could take in bigger ships and more goods, which is something these big companies and a lot of other businesses would benefit from. So, this whole situation shows how everything is connected. Problems far away, like the fight in Yemen, can affect how goods move around the world. And big ships needing special ports can change how countries like the US spend their money on things like digging deeper harbors and buying bigger cranes. Then, we turn our eyes to America's ports and see why they need to catch up to handle these giant ships and keep up with global trade. Docking Titans 
How Mesk aims to transform U.S. ports Mesk, among the world's biggest companies for moving containers on ships, is pushing for better port setups in the United States. They are a huge company with ships going all over the planet, and they need ports to work smoothly so they can get goods from one country to another without a hitch. Other big shipping companies like Mediterranean Shipping are in the same boat. They all see how important it is to put money into making ports better if they want to stay ahead in the worldwide shipping game. Upgrading the ports in the U.S. isn't just about digging the harbors deeper so bigger ships can fit. It's also about making bridges higher so these giant ships can get through, and making the places where they unload and load containers more up-to-date. This means getting better equipment and technology so they can move goods faster and more efficiently. But it's not just about the water and the docks. It's also about making sure that once the goods are off the ship, they can get to where they need to go easily. This means investing in better roads and railways leading away from the ports. Improving ports in the U.S. is super important for a bunch of reasons. First off, it helps goods move around more easily, which is good for businesses and consumers alike. But it's also about keeping up with the rest of the world. Other countries are making their ports better, so the U.S. needs to do the same to stay competitive. Plus, better ports can lead to more trade and investment, which can create jobs and help the economy grow, especially in cities where the ports are located. So, there's a big need for a well-thought-out, ongoing plan to prepare U.S. ports for today and tomorrow's big ships. This isn't something that can be done overnight. It needs a lot of planning, money, and work. But the payoff can be huge in terms of more trade, more jobs, and a stronger economy. In addition to all this, there's an interesting process related to port operations known as a water shuttle. This involves moving water to different trucks. While this might seem off-topic, it's actually part of the bigger picture of making sure that ports and their surrounding areas have the right infrastructure and systems in place. This could be for managing waste, dealing with runoff water, or making sure that there's no pollution from the port affecting the local area. It's all about making sure that the ports don't just work well for the ships and the cargo, but also that they are good neighbors to the people living nearby. But there's a big problem when a huge tanker comes into a port and throws everything off balance. The cranes that move containers from the ship to the shore have to be really big to reach the containers on the ship. When ships as big as the Ever Ace come in, they bring so many containers with them that it can be too much for the port to handle all at once. This means the port needs a lot of equipment and space to deal with all these containers. Big shipping companies like Mediterranean Shipping, Maersk, and Evergreen are saying that ports in the United States need to put more money into making their facilities better. If they do, it would help ease the traffic on the busy routes between Europe and Asia and make it easier to move goods around. But fixing this isn't just up to one group. It's a big job that needs everyone to work together, the ports, the government and the shipping companies, everyone needs to pitch in to build and keep up the kind of ports that can handle the biggest ships out there. Ships like the Ever Ace and the Mersky class are so big, over 400 meters long and able to carry more than 20,000 containers that they need special equipment and a lot of space at the ports just to come in and unload. Investing in the ports is super important. Without the right docks, cranes, and other equipment, these massive ships can't go where they need to, which messes up global trade routes. But it's more than just the big stuff, it's also about making sure the ports work better overall. This means making sure trucks and trains can get in and out smoothly, improving security and making sure the environment around the ports is protected. But let's think bigger, when a giant ship arrives, it's like a small town floating into the harbor. The amount of goods it brings is enormous. This can be great for businesses and shoppers, but only if the port can move those goods quickly. If the port isn't ready, those goods just sit there, which can lead to delays and extra costs. And it's not just about moving goods faster, it's also about making sure everything is done safely and without hurting the environment. Also, the bigger these ships get, the more careful ports need to be about things like tides and weather. A big ship caught in a bad storm or stuck because the water isn't deep enough can cause huge problems, not just for the port but for supply chains all around the world. Businesses are in a rush to make their operations quicker and cheaper. They want to move their goods faster, spend less money on fuel, and handle their cargo more smoothly. While these goals can lead to good things like less time spent moving goods around and lower costs, they also bring up some big worries. 
one of the main concerns is that the biggest companies might end up controlling too much of the shipping world. People are arguing about whether we should keep making bigger and bigger ships, especially since these giant ships might start avoiding well-known paths like the Suez Canal to take longer trips around Africa instead. If this happens, we could see even bigger ships that can carry loads more cargo. But making ships this big comes with its own set of problems, especially in tight spots like the Strait of Malacca, where navigating can get tricky. Right now, it doesn't look like we're going to see huge changes in the way most goods travel across the world anytime soon. But recent problems, like the trouble caused by the Houthi group, have made companies start thinking hard about how they can make their supply chains better and more reliable. They are not just looking at ships and ports, they're thinking about everything involved in moving goods all over the planet. They are coming up with new plans to make sure they can still deliver goods even when unexpected things happen. This means looking at different ways to move goods, figuring out the best ways to keep enough stock on hand, and using new technology to watch and track goods as they move, so they know where everything is all the time. The goal for these companies is to build supply chains that are not only efficient, but also strong and flexible. They want to be ready for anything, whether it's bad weather, political trouble, or something else they didn't expect. They are working on ways to bounce back quickly from any kind of problem, so they can keep their operations running smoothly no matter what happens. Now, we dive into how American ports are trying to get better at dealing with large ships and what this means for moving things faster and more efficiently. Chapter 5, Even Bigger Ships, Bigger Port, Savannah's Bold Upgrade Chapter 5 Even Bigger Ships. Docking Titans, how Maersk aims to transform U.S. ports Maersk, among the world's biggest companies for moving containers on ships, is pushing for better port setups in the United States. They are a huge company with ships going all over the planet, and they need ports to work smoothly so they can get goods from one country to another without a hitch. Other big shipping companies like Mediterranean Shipping are in the same boat. They all see how important it is to put money into making ports better if they want to stay ahead in the worldwide shipping game. Upgrading the ports in the US isn't just about digging the harbors deeper so bigger ships can fit. It's also about making bridges higher so these giant ships can get through, and making the places where they unload and load containers more up to date. This means getting better equipment and technology so they can move goods faster and more efficiently. But it's not just about the water and the docks. It's also about making sure that once the goods are off the ship, they can get to where they need to go easily. This means investing in better roads and railways leading away from the ports. Improving ports in the US is super important for a bunch of reasons. First off, it helps goods move around more easily, which is good for businesses and consumers alike. But it's also about keeping up with the rest of the world. Other countries are making their ports better, so the US needs to do the same to stay competitive. Plus, better ports can lead to more trade and investment, which can create jobs and help the economy grow, especially in cities where the ports are located. So, there's a big need for a well-thought-out, ongoing plan to prepare US ports for today and tomorrow's big ships. This isn't something that can be done overnight. It needs a lot of planning, money, and work. But the payoff can be huge in terms of more trade, more jobs, and a stronger economy. In addition to all this, there's an interesting process related to port operations known as a water shuttle. This involves moving water to different trucks. While this might seem off-topic, it's actually part of the bigger picture of making sure that ports and their surrounding areas have the right infrastructure and systems in place. This could be for managing waste, dealing with runoff water, or making sure that there's no pollution from the port affecting the local area. It's all about making sure that the ports don't just work well for the ships and the cargo, but also that they are good neighbors to the people living nearby. But there's a big problem when a huge tanker comes into a port and throws everything off balance. The cranes that move containers from the ship to the shore have to be really big to reach the containers on the ship. When ships as big as the Ever Ace come in, they bring so many containers with them that it can be too much for the port to handle all at once. This means the port needs a lot of equipment and space to deal with all these containers. Big shipping companies like Mediterranean Shipping, Maersk, and Evergreen are saying that ports in the United States need to put more money into making their facilities better. If they do, it would help ease the traffic on the busy routes between Europe and Asia and make it easier to move goods around. But fixing this isn't just up to one group. 
It's a big job that needs everyone to work together, the ports, the government, and the shipping companies, everyone needs to pitch in to build and keep up the kind of ports that can handle the biggest ships out there. Ships like the Ever Ace and the Mersky class are so big, over 400 meters long and able to carry more than 20,000 containers, that they need special equipment and a lot of space at the ports just to come in and unload. Investing in the ports is super important. Without the right docks, cranes, and other equipment, these massive ships can't go where they need to, which messes up global trade routes. But it's more than just the big stuff, it's also about making sure the ports work better overall. This means making sure trucks and trains can get in and out smoothly, improving security, and making sure the environment around the ports is protected. But let's think bigger, when a giant ship arrives, it's like a small town floating into the harbor. The amount of goods it brings is enormous. This can be great for businesses and shoppers, but only if the port can move those goods quickly. If the port isn't ready, those goods just sit there, which can lead to delays and extra costs. And it's not just about moving goods faster, it's also about making sure everything is done safely and without hurting the environment. Also, the bigger these ships get, the more careful ports need to be about things like tides and weather. A big ship caught in a bad storm or stuck because the water isn't deep enough can cause huge problems, not just for the port but for supply chains all around the world. Businesses are in a rush to make their operations quicker and cheaper. They want to move their goods faster, spend less money on fuel, and handle their cargo more smoothly. While these goals can lead to good things like less time spent moving goods around and lower costs, they also bring up some big worries. One of the main concerns is that the biggest companies might end up controlling too much of the shipping world. People are arguing about whether we should keep making bigger and bigger ships, especially since these giant ships might start avoiding well-known paths like the Suez Canal to take longer trips around Africa instead. If this happens, we could see even bigger ships that can carry loads more cargo. But making ships this big comes with its own set of problems, especially in tight spots like the Strait of Malacca, where navigating can get tricky. Right now, it doesn't look like we're going to see huge changes in the way most goods travel across the world anytime soon. But recent problems, like the trouble caused by the Houthi group, have made companies start thinking hard about how they can make their supply chains better and more reliable. They are not just looking at ships and ports, they are thinking about everything involved in moving goods all over the planet. They are coming up with new plans to make sure they can still deliver goods even when unexpected things happen. This means looking at different ways to move goods, figuring out the best ways to keep enough stock on hand, and using new technology to watch and track goods as they move, so they know where everything is all the time. The goal for these companies is to build supply chains that are not only efficient, but also strong and flexible. They want to be ready for anything, whether it's bad weather, political trouble, or something else they didn't expect. They are working on ways to bounce back quickly from any kind of problem, so they can keep their operations running smoothly no matter what happens. Now, we dive into how American ports are trying to get better at dealing with large ships and what this means for moving things faster and more efficiently. Chapter 5, Even Bigger Ships, Bigger Port, Savannah's Bold Upgrade Even Bigger Ships. In today's world, where companies face both big challenges and exciting opportunities, it's super important for everyone in the shipping world to work together. This teamwork can lead to new ideas and keep goods moving smoothly around the globe. Talking about making our shipping better is key. Right now, our ships are big enough, but we really need to make our ports work better. This means getting containers off ships quickly, which American ports are pretty good at, and figuring out how to move these containers around inside the ports more efficiently. We shouldn't just think about making the ports bigger. Instead, we should focus on maximizing what we already have. This could mean finding better ways to move containers through the port, so they get from the ship to the truck or train faster. Over in Europe, they've already started doing this. They've put a lot of money into making ports like Rotterdam in the Netherlands and Hamburg in Germany better. They've made them ready for bigger ships and figured out how to handle more containers faster, thanks to new technology and smarter ways of doing things. This has made things quicker and more efficient, which is great for everyone. The last big update to a port in the US was at the port of Savannah in Georgia. They started a big project there called the Savannah Harbor Expansion Project, or SHEP, back in 2015. The goal was to make the river deeper so that bigger ships could come in and out more easily. 
they dug out about 40 miles of the Savannah River, making it deeper from 42 feet to 47 feet when the tide is low. This means that when the water is not very high, the big ships can still get through without a problem. They also made sure to take care of the environment while they were doing this, by building things to help protect the local plants and animals. The push to make ports bigger, like what happened with the Savannah Harbor expansion project, is mostly because of the new, massive ships that are now sailing the seas. Ships today, like those known as Post Panamax and New Panamax, are huge and need deeper water to get into ports when they are loaded down with cargo. By making the Savannah River deeper, the port of Savannah can now welcome these giant ships. This makes the port more appealing for global business and helps it handle more goods coming in and out. When they finished making the Savannah Harbor deeper, it was a big deal for the port and for the whole area around it. Now, the port can deal with more containers and bigger ships than before. This means more goods can come in and out, which is great for businesses and the economy. The bigger port can now offer more jobs to people, not just in shipping, but also in fields related to moving and storing goods, like logistics, running warehouses, and spreading out goods to different places. This bigger port has also made the area a key spot for international trade, especially along the east coast of the United States. Now that it can handle larger ships more easily, the port of Savannah is an important part of the worldwide trading system. It's become a crucial point for moving goods efficiently and reliably, which is what companies look for when they decide where to send their products. But the impact goes beyond just moving cargo. With the ability to handle more business, the port can help the local economy grow in big ways. It's not just about the jobs directly at the port, it's also about all the other businesses that will grow because they are connected to what the port does. This includes companies that make things, those that help move things from one place to another, and all the stores and services that will grow because more people are working and have money to spend. The recent expansion at the port of Savannah is a big deal for America's port system. It shows how important it is to keep improving our ports so they can keep up with the rest of the world and help our economy grow. Just like the port of Savannah, other places around the world, like the Middle East and Asia, are also making their ports bigger and better. For example, Dubai's Jebel Ali port and the port of Singapore have made huge changes to handle bigger ships and more cargo, making everything run smoother and faster. Spreading out the work among different ports is a smart move. This way, we can avoid too many ships waiting at one port, slowing everything down. By having a bunch of ports that work together, we can ensure big ships can unload their cargo quickly and move on. This helps prevent backups and keeps goods moving to where they need to go. So, instead of just making a couple of big ports even bigger, it might be better to improve many ports all over the place. This way, we can create a strong network of ports that can handle all kinds of ships and cargo. This network would help us keep up with the growing needs of shipping stuff worldwide. Is the shift in ultra-large container vessel routes just a temporary error, or is there a deeper, perhaps even global, recalibration at play? Share your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights into the changing tides of global trade.